The sweet sound of a late fall harvest at Stone Barn Center in Westchester, New York. But the land that grows these parsnips does more than feed people. It's also key in the effort to fight climate change because part of what makes that soil so dark is carbon that's been pulled out of the air and deposited there by plants. So in a sense, carbon is injected into the soil through plant roots via photosynthesis and that nutrient exchange. Connor Stedman is an ecological designer and farm planner. He's an expert on what's sometimes called carbon farming, not just growing crops, but keeping the soil carbon rich and healthy. Things look quiet out here, and it's not the main growing season, but this group behind me is singing and digging up parsnips, and that's because there's so much going on beneath the surface. In just one handful of soil, there are more microbes than there are people on Earth. Those microbes are hungry. One of the things they eat are sugars, produced in the plant's leaves, delivered to the soil by their roots. So what had been heat-trapping carbon dioxide is now dark, healthy soil. So it's this unbelievable symbiosis. And it's one of the reasons why crops grow better and taste better in living soils. It's more than the flavor of our food. Climate scientists say around the world, soil holds a massive potential to sequester carbon. And it's not complicated. It relies on basic farming techniques, like cover crops, composting, livestock grazing, and planting trees alongside buffer zones. An acre of land can store potentially anywhere from 10 to 100 or more tons of carbon through these excellent farming practices. The world's soil used to hold a lot more carbon than it does today. Conventional farming has degraded the land, releasing 50 to 80 percent of that carbon into the atmosphere where it now traps additional heat. But Stedman also sees this as an opportunity. There are billions of acres of farmland that are either degraded from overuse or from inappropriate techniques for that climate, or are in excellent condition for the addition of trees or the addition of managed grazing. His optimism is fitting for the Young Farmers Conference, which brings hundreds of people to the Stone Barn Center each year. Kira Foti, program coordinator, says that the goal of the conference is to spread ideas and inspire farmers. It's really hard for these people to, for this to be viable and for them to make it and to make change. So, like, I think it's great that everyone here is supporting each other in that way. The conference is especially valuable for farmers like Rachel Murray, who believe changing agricultural practices can change the world. This place supports that notion and wants all sorts of people throughout the whole entire food system chain, supply chain, to be part of that and to help collectively. For Stedman, carbon farming fits this larger vision, and it could be further strengthened with the help of policymakers. There's a really significant potential for carbon farming worldwide to play a role in reversing the climate crisis. There is more carbon in the world's soils than the entire atmosphere and all life on Earth's surface combined. Whoa, and there's room for plenty more, which means a solution to the carbon crisis is right under our feet. Come and go with me. Redbird, get up. Aye -ya. Shake your tail. Aye -ya. A redbird, get up. Aye -ya. I'll do the same. Whoa, oh, my darling. Whoa, oh, Evelina. Whoa, oh, my darling. Come and go with me.